Hey guys, Jengo here. Welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are taking a look at how to get kills in War Thunder and then specifically realistic battle. Now apart from the fact that uh, get good and uh, those kind of remarks, I've thought about this and I feel there is six different subjects that you need to develop skills in. And to start it off with, I think one of the most important things is situational awareness. You need to develop a habit of looking around you to get an overall tactical situation map in your head. And you have got to update this map constantly because planes are flying quickly and you've got to stay up to date in your tactical situation because when you don't people will sneak up on you and you will die if you have a lot of deaths that are caused by somebody you didn't see then you are definitely lacking in the situational awareness department and you need to start upping your camera skills as you see in the clips that are passing in the background I never have a dull moment while I'm flying I am always looking around I am always checking the situations left right beneath me above me everything you are continuously scanning for targets both allies and opponents and uh, you need to be aware where both are because of course in a team effort you also need team members you need to know where your your allies are you need to know where your enemies are and you need to identify the worst targets and the options that you have for solving situations now your own skills with the plane of course can solve situations but allies in the neighborhood can also mean something for you so you need to do that apart from that you need to track multiple targets at the same time you need to be able to do that especially when you're dogfighting two three targets keeping an eye on that you see here that I am looking around while I am maneuvering against these guys that is also something that is very important in situational awareness and that is mastering the camera you have to be able to look at your opponent while you are flying against him you need to see what he does to be able to make the moves necessary to counter what he's doing or you take the initiative because you can see that he's making a mistake if you have not mastered your camera work you need to start practicing you know you activate the thing with the C key and then you take over the camera with the mouse and you start flying the plane with the camera this is hard in the beginning you will fail in the beginning you will fly against trees you will crash into mountains you will be shot down because you are pressing the wrong aileron and you're turning the other side where you meant to go that is going to happen because sometimes you'll be flying the plane uh, while you're looking at the opponent actually and uh, then the plane is reversed <laughs> you'll make a lot of mistakes but if you keep at it you will master camera work and you will get good at it and that will add to your mastery of situational awareness and defensive flying because defensive flying starts and ends with camera work that is something you need to master so all in all for this subject situational awareness is where it all starts from from this skill if you develop it it has multiple facets but from this skill you can start to fill in your match make the choices you have to make and um, here we come into the next topic actually which is positioning positioning comes right out of your situational awareness skills and your overall tactical situation that is forming in your brain while you are looking around you are scanning you are seeing planes climb you are seeing targets coming and you're seeing allies come into trouble and stuff like that and from that you are going to position your plane now this means that you've got to assess the situation and you've got to recognize your chances You've got to see where your plane will do well and you've got to place that plane exactly where it needs to be and then you can start helping your team 
Now, if your plane, for example, is a uh, plane that needs to come from altitude, then you've got to take your time and don't think you won't be helping your team. You will be helping your team by getting that plane up to altitude and getting the plane in the right position. Now, when you have uh, recognized your target and you have made uh, the decision to go there, you are planning your attack angle. You have to look at where you are and where you want to go when you exit from the attack. So not only uh, would I recommend you to position your plane correctly and to plan your attack angle, but to also have an exit plan. An exit plan is very, very important. Because you want to survive, right? You don't want to just get the kill and get out and uh, and be caught by a plane that is on the left uh, of the other plane just where you were, are coming through. You've got to see that plane as well, as in situational awareness check. You see that plane, so you your plan is to exit the other way, for example. Or you, you exit towards that plane and attack him right after. But uh, having an exit plan and a good attack angle will definitely help you to survive and to make good attack runs. Now in this you also gotta take into account that sometimes you need to help the team and you, for example, you can bait for an opponent. That's why you also, you can bait for an ally. That's why you always gotta be aware of where your allies are. Now your energy is very important in most planes this is important you need to gain it and you need to keep it to have a superior energy advantage over your uh, opponents is very very important and you've got to be aware of that you've got to have your altitude you've got to know about your planes energy retention and acceleration and also beware of the energy state that your enemy is in now as you go along you will start to uh, become better at assessing your enemy's energy state but in the beginning you will definitely make mistakes in that and assess it incorrectly and uh, get killed because of it. But as you continue to uh, develop your situational awareness skills as we mentioned before your positioning will also get better and you will make better decisions. And that takes me right into the third subject, which is decision making. Now using the information that you have from your scanning and your looking around, you have positioned your plane in a spot where you think you can use the plane correctly and then you've got to make the decision to attack. Now you've got to use the ever-changing information you have of the battlefield to make the correct decisions and to make decisions that are reachable and don't put you in too much danger. <laughs> and that is a trick you need to learn because of course you will always get into danger more or less. Mostly when you start attacking other planes. You are never sure at how good the enemy pilot is. You are never exactly sure as to how the fight will develop, will your first shot hit or not and you've got to quickly react. You know, the moment you make the decision to attack, uh, all plans usually go out the window because the situation is flexible. But if you have and continue to keep a good situational awareness on the whole situation, then you will be able to make choices and to uh, adapt to the ever-changing situation. Now this goes into where to attack, when to attack, when do you wait, you know, when do you keep circling. This can depend on small things. Sometimes you see other targets pop up and you decide not to attack that plane you were planning two kilometers below you because there is another plane popping up at your same altitude or at a kilometer behind you and you can switch targets like we do here. It is very simple, it is just a changing thing that uh, you adjust your plan towards the changing situation. Now here again I changed my target and because I saw this ally in trouble here and that's where I could make the most difference to the team at that time. Now there's also baiting you can do sometimes that happens and when it does happen it can be very valuable because whether you kill a plane or another guy kills a plane when you're only two or three guys left in a match 
it is fantastic when you can work together like that and help the team decimate the enemy. Now successful decision making is something that can only come from experience. I can tell you to be patient but patience in this game is something that uh, not a lot of people have. Discipline is something you need to train, something you need to recognize as being useful and uh, if you're still early in your development as a pilot it is one of the most valuable things that you can teach yourself to be patient to look around and to wait for the right opportunity and to make the decision to attack in exactly the right time now this changes of course per plane uh, what the right situation is and when the right moment is to attack and what good situations are for a plane to uh, attack this is all dependable on how your plane flies and thus you will need experience with planes to be able to make good decisions and the better you get at the game and the more planes you have flown the more you develop and the more your decision making will be on par now that takes me straight into aiming of course after all that work after all that scanning after all the positioning and you finally made the decision to attack and then you finally got to make sure that all that work bears fruit and that you can only do by aim correctly by getting the shells in and by killing the target and this is not an easy thing as many of you know aiming is not easy uh, there is a lot of planes in War Thunder there is a lot of ammunition there's a lot of different guns and calibers these shells for these guns and these calibers have different velocities they have uh, different explosive filler or they are armor piercing and there is so much to learn uh, about this leading is not something you just do for example you also have your convergence next to your ammo belt that you choose you choose a specific uh, convergence at which your guns meet in front of your plane um, in the, the the most of the pilots in the second world war had this convergence pretty close to the plane but war thunder uh, works a little bit more at distance of course you can still put it at 200 300 meters i may there may even be people who have it at 100 meters but in war thunder that really means that you are risking collisions and unless you have extremely good reflexes i wouldn't recommend a 100 or 200 meter convergence 400 does work for a lot of planes i usually prefer 600 myself because i like to be able to do head-ons head-ons are a skill apart uh, and uh, are also in the aiming department uh, if you haven't seen my head-on tutorial yet do check that out after this one but um, i personally like to be able to still do a head-on rather effectively and a 600 meter uh, convergence is the minimum for that in my opinion and it also still works very well for wing mounted guns for nose mounted guns i usually use a 800 meter convergence but this is down to personal preference and that may be completely different for what you like here we have a head-on for example unfortunately that did give the option to my uh, opponent that was behind me to shoot me down in that case but twa, that's life with aiming you also need to take into account as to how far the plane is you need to uh, have a little bit of an idea to how your caliber of gun that you have on your plane right there uh, drops off so what is the velocity what is the velocity of the shell uh, can you shoot far with it you can test it this a little bit in test flight you can see the shells drop off you can also see if your gun kicks a little bit or not some uh, guns do some don't and you got to take all of this into account and uh, in how much lead you give to the, the plane the lead is of course the amount of space you leave between your aiming reticle and the, the plane and as you see um, if you find the correct uh, lead then you will destroy the enemy plane now to find that you need to practice again you need to uh, practice with the plane that you're flying you need to get a feel for where where its shells fly 
and after a while you will start to be good at that in the beginning this takes time but the better you get at um, flying a lot of planes uh, me for example now I have four years in this in this game I have all the trees unlocked and um, it takes me four to five matches to become proficient with a caliber if I've flown another caliber the day before I need a few matches to really become proficient and get my aim on point and um, if you want to become really really good you need a little bit more time especially when you're new to the game you need to get feel for 50 cals you need to get a feel for 20 millimeters the german 20 millimeters the mg 151s or the hispanos from the british you know there's there's a lot of stuff to uh, to go around and you also need to uh, start looking at your ammo for example when you want to kill uh, planes you need to go for air targets but not necessarily only air targets you also have universal you need to find a belt with a good amount of high explosive shells. Uh, for the Germans that's Minengusschoss, for the uh, Russians that's often the ground target belt. But you gotta look at the, uh, the shells that are in the belt itself and you gotta look at the uh, explosive targets. If you wanna go uh, for tanks or uh, ground pounding you may wanna look at uh, armor piercing. But um, another thing that is important in aiming is zooming in. This is something that I do a lot and it is something I think a lot of people overlook. If you don't zoom in you often miss your shot because uh, the planes actually at a certain distance are pretty small and you don't always necessarily see which way they're turning. When you zoom in you get a little bit of a, a better view. I have my zoom on my right mouse button and if I let the mouse button go I uh, let go of the zoom so uh, click the button, hold it. I uh, have zoom and let it go and it uh, goes out again so it's really easily accessible for me and it really helped me here we zoom in again for this shot and we get him in the first burst and uh, I think uh, it is important to master the zooming in and to know when to use it and to know when not to use it I use the zoom in option a lot <laughs> so all in all aiming is something that takes time you need a lot of knowledge about belts, about guns, about calibers, about velocity and you just need to get a feel for it. It's also an, in, an intuitive thing. But uh, for most people if you're missing the target you have to maybe uh, first work with a tracer belt so you can see where the shells are going and uh, are the shells going ahead of your target, are they falling short and then you can adjust your aim. And when you do that and you get a lot of time in, you will slowly become a better aim and you will be able to shoot more targets down and really start to benefit more and more from the work and the things that you learned in the other three mentioned subjects. And that is using a plane to its strengths. This is something that is important. I mean the four first mentioned subjects are more important but if you do not use your plane to your strings you are flying with one arm behind your back. You gotta know what your plane is good at. You gotta know whether you are in one of three types of planes. You have boom and zoomers, you have energy fighters and you have turn fighters. Now boom and zooming is basically a plane that comes from altitude, dives on a target, a long dive, shoots at the target and then zooms out the other way hopefully getting and having killed the target energy fighting is more short work in which you are fighting for the better energy position and trying to get a gun solution on an enemy plane while you are trying to keep your energy as high as possible that is very important and you've got to know when you're in a plane that has a good energy retention and a good acceleration because then you might be in an energy fighter and you could exploit that in certain situations. Now energy fighting is not the same as turn fighting. Energy fighting is more a positioning fight. Trying to get the superior position and then making the final attack on that opponent. Turn fighting though is uh, turn fighting. So you are going into the fight. You are making turns around each other and maneuvers and you are trying to get on the enemy's six while the enemy is trying to get on your six 
And if you're trying to do that in a plane that is meant for boom and zooming, you will soon find out what I mean with that you have to use a plane to its strings. A boom and zoomer cannot be used for turn fighting and an energy fighter can also not be used for turn fighting most of the time. Sometimes you have jack of all trades which can transition into different roles and, but they are but they're not specialized and you want to make sure that you know what your plane can do and for that you need to do a little bit of research maybe. Maybe you can uh, learn it from your own um, research by trying out different roles and trying to uh, see how the plane performs in that or you could watch a few videos there's a lot of guys on YouTube that make good plane reviews and will tell you exactly what a plane is good at and what you should and shouldn't do in certain planes so you should definitely make sure that you know your plane and you also know the enemy's plane that's why the biggest tip I can give you is to fly all six nations fly them all get to know all the planes know what they can do and thus when you are fighting another team you know that that LA-7 that we're looking at right now is a fantastic uh, energy fighter and can turn very well as well at mid to low altitude and that it is good that I took him out at 3000 meters because he was in his preferred um, altitude range and I was not <laughs> so you got to be able to use your plane to its strings and to use uh, what you know about the enemy plane as well Use his weaknesses and use your strengths. And then we come to our final subject. And that subject is air combat maneuvers or in other words, how to control your plane. You need to learn how to control your plane. If you um, don't know anything about air combat maneuvers and you're just throwing your planes around, you will notice once you get into air combat maneuvers and you start to learn about a certain tactics that pilots would use in the second world war that you already did some of those maneuvers um, because uh, it is natural it comes out of intuition but to know them is to master them and once you master these maneuvers you also know whether your plane is good at it or not for example in these scissors you got to know whether your plane can uh, do well in a scissors before you go into one to make somebody overshoot you but you got to teach yourself maneuvers and you got to extend on the, the amount of knowledge you have and what you can do in certain situations when you can stall out an enemy plane like here for example practice your stall maneuvers and in that sense of course you also want to practice your keyboard and your mouse and what you do with both for example like I mentioned earlier if you're flying defensively you want to fly with your keyboard and you want to control the camera with the mouse. Uh, that is also something, just a control scheme that you're working with. You gotta master that. Uh, that's one thing. But after that, you also gotta learn your different maneuvers. And in that sense, you gotta do one thing at a time. You gotta start with the simple things like elevator turns. If you don't know what that is, using full elevator in a turn, for example, or rudder use or rudder turn loops simple things and after that you go into scissors you go into stall maneuvers and the more and more you uh, you learn about these maneuvers and the more you get into your uh, package as a pilot uh, the more you will be able to abuse them and to lure people in like this very vertical uh, climbing scissors i went into for a defensive move against the p38 you got to know when to use different maneuvers to outsmart your opponent. And if you do that well, and if you uh, start to implement all these things I mentioned, uh, starting with situational awareness, going to positioning, then the decision making, the aiming to finish the opponents off, knowing your planes, plane knowledge is important. And finally, the maneuvers and the control you have on your plane if you have all that in your luggage, in your baggage as a pilot, you will start to uh, become a ace in the end. <laughs> and yes, it is possible. If I can do it, then you can do it as well. Guys, I will of course make more tutorials in the future. I already have quite a few. Do check out my tutorial playlist. 
I have an air combat maneuver playlist and a tutorial playlist. Be sure to check them out and I will most likely make smaller tutorials on the subjects that we have just gone through to focus in more on them. But what I talked about today is basically all you need to know to become a good pilot. You just need to invest the time yourself. It will take blood, sweat and tears, but at the end of that road you will become, you will be a competent pilot that can hold its own and more in War Thunder. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment and if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.